My name is Phyllis Saballero. I am an educator, visual artist, and painter. In today's episode of Cultural Cash Online, I will be talking about my work titled Requiem One from the Cultural Center of the Philippines 21st Century Art Museum Collection. concentrated on painting as my major. I went to UP Fine Arts in Diliman, but even then I was my third degree already. By the time I decided to go into fine arts, I already had three children. And it was a time of making up my mind why, why was I feeling so unfulfilled. The whole thing, young mother doing everything. It dawned on me then, I said, I think it's because really since childhood, I'd wanted to be an artist. I had been exposed to art all my life because I grew up abroad and we lived near major museums. My parents, my family, none of them were interested in art. It was a new thing for me. And I went back to UP because my degree before then was also from UP, from the School of Economics. And it was a real change in feeling from becoming an economics major to becoming a painter. I went back to UP and I was fortunate that by the second year, by 1975, I was already in the class of Roberto Chabet, who was the main exponent for a modern, constructive kind of art. He trained your eye first by making you copy masters. Vermeer, uh, Degas, you had to copy it as closely as you could, which gave you control over your hand and your eye. Bobby Chabet talked all the time, which was part of the whole educational process. And since he was also friendly with a whole batch of new abstractionists, that's what we talked about. We liked it because it had a lot of intelligent talk to it, not just copying. And so we did quite a bit of mixed media work, meaning you wouldn't stay with just paper and canvas and paints and pencils. At the time, there was going to be an exhibit being sent abroad by the Cultural Center, a group show on new abstract artists. And so I decided to do this particular painting that you see in this gallery, and I submitted it to the Cultural Center. And it was accepted and sent abroad. And when it came back, you know, they seemed to like it. I was so honored. I said, I donate it to the Cultural Center. But the reason too that I entrusted a lot of things, and I learned a lot from the Cultural Center of the Philippines, is because I started working, quote unquote, uh, sort of as an assistant to Ray Albano. Raimundo Albano was his formal name. He was already the head of the CCP, Visual Arts Division. And he loved having new artists around him. And he'd take you everywhere. And he had been the assistant to Roberto Chabet. So, when Bobby Chabet brought his class, we were called the Chabet Babies. The seven of us were chosen to be the 13 artists of 1978, only seven. Then I was also given my first one-man show. All along, while I was doing these very large paintings, the paintings got bigger and bigger because that was part of the abstraction mantra. 
Never let a size, whether large or small, limit you when you are doing artwork. Talking of painting all the time, I cannot get away with not talking about how you make a painting. And that is called the technique of applying the material to the ground that you're painting on. And using, like I said, any mixed media, any found objects, any texture you could use, and that was all technique. So I started doing, in black and white, what I call my drip paintings. And I did, for a show in the cultural center, one wall, one big wall of one of their niches, which is rather large, and I dripped paint, it was all black and white. I dripped paint on these small pieces from the top, from the bottom, three layers, 10 layers, and I had to do this. I couldn't control the drip except for the thickness of the paint. My paintings took over my life. I wanted texture. Even my dogs were allowed to walk all over my paintings, which would happen on the floor. You know? It was very exciting during those years. It will never happen again, and I owe a lot to the cultural center and to my gurus at the time. I was talking about this painting hanging behind me, which is called the Requiem One. I titled it that, and it was, I believe at the time, I might have been mourning the loss of somebody or a pet had died or something like that. And Requiem is how you would react to a death or the loss of somebody who you would miss. It's so hard to be painting hundreds and hundreds of paintings and finding a way to give it a title, give it a name. Without a name, it's like it was never born. In relation to our titling, it had a deep intellectual meaning to it. That's how I came up with the idea of naming my abstractions after the place where I remembered at the time. So abstraction was not just visual. What you have to do is you try to remember at the time who you were with, how you felt about that person, what you were smelling, not just what you were seeing, but what were you touching? Were you drinking something? Were you feeling something at all? All of these emotional and physical stimuli would be translated into an abstract form. I would have to decide what to use on it, what paint. And oil is the best way to treat something like burlap. I would decide I would do this to this burlap and then apply this burlap onto an oil ground, which was the black background and the color. And then to apply the burlap is the most important thing because you don't want that burlap peeling off. And it's lasted all these years. And as you can see, the technique plus the materials used in the application of the technique has lasted many, many years. I do my studies on scratch paper. When I think I know this is how it's going to be, the size, what material I'm using, what kind of pencil am I using, then I put it into a sketchbook. This painting was in sketchbook number five in 1978. On that page, you would see my sketch in pencil and my planned size would be. And then on one side of it, usually on the right side, as I am painting, I am putting down the actual color, the paint I am using. This is for documentation actually, for me and for whoever comes across it in the future. I always document on a card, like a library card. The history of that painting, and that's how I remember it. It's not that I have a good memory, but I looked this one up when I knew that CCP had come up with it, and it says where it was shown, how it got to CCP, where it is now. On the back, usually I would have a picture of the painting, but I didn't have one, so it said 
note, no photo. Here it is. And it has the size, 28 and a half by 21 inches, the year 1981. So there it is, oil collage and burlap mixed media on oil painting paper. It's not an ordinary paper. It's a paper made for oil painting. I use four pieces of Rowney oil painting paper mounted on illustration board. Oil collage, oil pastel conte, which is a crayon, and burlap. Here it is, the sketch of how it's going to look. Then underneath, you've got the record number and CCP Permanent Collection, who owns it. It was first shown at the ASEAN Traveling Exhibit in 1981. It was in Bangkok for the ASEAN show, and so it traveled in ASEAN. I am very honored and pleased. After all this time, this painting, one of my young children, has come again into the limelight. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Cultural Cash Online.